Welcome to uh, another episode of our Over Limit podcast. Um, today we have our fourth guest. I'll just start counting. <laughs> you did well. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, better than you. Um, it's actually our first guest, which has a background history outside of uh, motorsport and cycling. Um, I think we can say one of the best cyclists. Thank you. Thank you. There's been. Um, <laughs> I have fact. to even read all the stuff you've won. Four times Paris-Roubaix, three times uh, Tour of Flanders, world champion, Belgium champion, six stages in the Tour de France. So It's not too shabby. Not too bad. <laughs> no, I, I've, done all, I've done all right. <laughs> yeah. And then you started uh, racing cars. So uh, we're happy to have you here on the show and, and, and listen. Because I'm, I'm a very passionate cyclist as well. Um, I think as 99% can. of the people watching probably know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. So, so, so I will be interested. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested to hear the, the stories from you and, and the differences. Um, so see where we get. So let's start. Um, well, the main first question, let's say, uh, is how or how did you get into to motorsport? Who helped you or who gave you the, the golden tip? The golden tip? There's no golden tip, <laughs> like you guys know. Who told um, you to spend all the money? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's the main problem, actually. No, but um, I was always passionate about motorsports. And um, as long as I can remember, I went to uh, the track here in Zolder with my grandfather. Uh, even back in the days, I think I saw when I was a really, really small kid, even uh, Formula One. Yeah. Uh, I can't really remember, but he's dead, so I can't ask him. But I've always been passionate about motorsports. And um, thanks to my career in cycling, of course, uh, I got a little bit of a name of myself. So it was a little bit more easy than for other people to get into motorsports on a, on a later age, on an older age. But um, I was always sure that uh, the moment I stopped cycling, I was going to car race cars. Yeah, yeah I was. And I, I, th I think it's about... Um, not exactly the cars, that's my passion, but to have competition in my life. Yeah. And uh, I see a lot of guys stopping cycling and you've done 80, 90 races a year. The approach to the race weekend, you know, the stress, the, the victories, but also the deceptions and losing races and the highs and lows of, of, a, of an athlete's life. And um, I think I was looking for that and uh, I found it in motorsports. Yeah. It's funny that you actually say it because I feel that in cycling, yeah. And I don't necessarily do a lot of, of races, but the main reason why now it's less, but the last year I was cycling so much is the competition against yeah. people I knew or to be better or best or, or even in group rides, you know, even if it's not a race, to to have this competition feeling. Um, so it's you funny you have the motorsport. <laughs> I have it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, me too. I think it's a mindset and um, being the best of a four group ride, you know, yeah. Even that's satisfying. Yeah, exactly. You go training and <laughs> uh, you feel yourself a little bit better than the other guys sitting next to you and just pushing a little bit and playing with your, with your uh, your teammate or the guy you're training with. Um, the motorsport is 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 quite different because I only started racing. I, I was riding track days and I had several cars when I was I think from my 20, 25 or twenty four. I can't really remember. Um, I bought a few race cars and I did track day. So I was riding, but just on my own. And then yeah. I got my license and um, that's when it got a little bit more serious. But I was really humble in the beginning because, you know, as a, as a rider, you're the, the, you're the factor in the car that's decided. You know, the car can go 100%. Mm -hmm. And if you can get out 90%, yeah, it's your problem. So yeah. trying to get better in that and pushing yourself and then finding the limit more of the car, that's what uh, I think yeah, keeps you fresh in mind as well. Sure. I'm uh, 42 now, and I think without motorsports, probably I would have been fatter now. <laughs> <laughs> and it keeps me fit, it keeps me motivated to go training, and I think that's uh, one of the most important things for me. But you can still do motorsports and be fat. Uh, I've seen that. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen <laughs> that. I've seen that. But for me, yeah. it's, uh, for me it's not possible. I, I want to I yeah. look a little bit good as well. And it's my fear as well when I stop being yeah. a professional at one point. Because I love yeah, to too. eat. But I, yeah, for sure, me as well. Even yeah, we you can do. see it now. No, but <laughs> uh, when I stop, I I really enjoy enjoy life, enjoy the the good things in life. Um, also because I I really have a, a, a thinking wise of you only live once, so you just have to try and enjoy every moment you have. But yeah, 
special luckily I do sports so I can I can try to look fit. Yeah, the thing is you can do both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because because of the sport you can do both. You can enjoy yourself, you can have two, three days off and then and, and enjoy having good dinner or going exactly. to a party. It doesn't really matter, man. The, mm. the, the trick in life is balance. Exactly. If, if the balance true. goes one way, uh, then you have a problem. I, even with sports, if you go too extreme, you get it a problem. Works. So it has to be balanced out. That's why I go train so often so I can eat more as well. Yeah, yeah, but you're, <laughs> yeah I understand. Your scale is for sure more to the sporty side. Yeah, I just enjoy it. I mean, I yeah, everybody's. I mean, we spoke about thing. before the podcast. I'm, I train a lot, treat a little bit, a little bit less, but I just enjoy it, and I and I feel guilty when I don't, which sometimes yeah. is not healthy neither. But um, everybody has to end, feel confident the in their way of, of doing, of making sure that they are feeling ready and fit for, mm -hmm. for whatever they try to do. One more uh, little question is not on the list. Was it for you a difficult? Because of course, yeah. For me, for example, uh, cycling, Lawrence knows because we went cycling a few times together. I'm very, well, I don't have the best balance or I'm not very good on two wheels. Um, <laughs> was it for you a very difficult adaptation to, to uh, go from two wheels to four wheels? Yeah, it, it's it's completely different. Uh, yeah. People, that, It's a question they ask me quite often, like you've been on top of one sport. How difficult is it to get on top of the other sport? It's very difficult. Mm. It's very, very difficult. Mm. You can get into a certain level where you feel comfortable in and then getting out of that comfort zone again and get faster, yeah. it's super difficult. Also because I don't have a background in karting. So I find myself, I, I've done Carrera Cup this year, which mm. is quite competitive. It was a quite yeah. competitive championship this difficult year. Difficult car as well. Difficult yeah. car. Yeah, difficult. I think the, the, the di most difficult car yeah to learn how to race in sprint racing. Yeah, exactly. And the level was very high this year as well. So you find yourself, you know, uh, the qualifying runs was the first time I've done um, qualifying runs in a cup car. You know, you have to learn how to qualify all over again because in a qualifying race in, let's say, uh, Supercar Challenge or Belcar or in, in uh, Greventing in the past, you got like 30 minutes yeah, exactly. where you can qualify. You can just take your time and adapt. In the cup car, you go out on gold tires and you get one or two laps. Yeah. You're 50 minutes or something, no? Yeah, but the peak of the tire yeah. is there and you have to you have to get it right. Yeah. If you fuck it up, you know, you don't you don't have ABS or anything, the tire is gone, you have to raise on the tire again. So you know, the mental approach to that qualification was the first time I really found myself limited in, in my own, own uh, abilities. Uh, it was going okay, but to get that last second out of a cup car is super difficult. You're riding against guys um, like Harry King, he, yeah. did, he done. He told me he done sixty five test days the year before in the yeah, cup car. Sure. So yeah, I've done five. <laughs> and, yeah, just, just slight disadvantage. Yeah, slight disadvantage. <laughs> but you get, you, you know, you have to respect uh, the timing. You have to respect that you need more time in the yeah. car to get. Um, you need more time in the car to be faster in that one minute or two minutes. Mm -hmm. Funny story. I've actually, I and mean, I've been saying this since five years that I'm with Porsche. I've never driven a cup car. No, uh, it's it's very. I've I've done the. GT2. I asked him, can I drive it <laughs> at one point? <laughs> but I've never. Are oh, we doing a test in uh, February? I oh, invite no. you to <laughs> test it. <laughs> no, but it's it's completely different. I've I've done the GT3 R now in yeah. Abu Dhabi for the World Finals, and okay, when you go fast, everything's difficult. But it's it's easier to drive a GT3 R than driving a cup car. Yeah, because of ABS and yeah, the everything, control. and also the, the front end turns in more easily. And yeah. with a cup car, you have to find the balance of the weight, the back pushing the front end in. And mm. I think it's now it's what I've heard because obviously you haven't driven. Nowadays they're already a bit more easy, but I think the like two generations back that this was, was very a really difficult. tough yeah. Yeah, yeah. car to drive, yeah, and everybody was quick in that was. Uh, yeah. Superstar and everything else, yeah, which yeah. I did after. Yeah, I've, did, I've done the, the 991 uh, first generation, but just did Belka yeah. with that and 24 hour race. And then uh, now the 992 version is, is, is a different world. Yeah. It's much easier. But and still a cup car. Still yeah. the, 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 the idea behind the car is still the same, yeah. but it drives easier. And every car is, I mean, you can get to a limit with every car, but to, every, to get last two, three tenths out of whatever car, if it's a Formula One car or a, or a Fiat Punto, uh, yeah, it it's matter. the same, uh, it's the same thing. You know, mm -hmm. it's very difficult. What's your, um, if you say you're going to race for another five years or whatever, what's the one thing you want to achieve in motorsport? Um, like everyone, I mean, I'm Belgium, Spa is on the list, yeah. 24 hours of Spa is on the list. 
that's why I'm trying to switch to GT3 cars now. Makes sense. Um, and Le Mans is the biggest dream. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, trying to achieve that goal, you know, as, as especially for me, I've been on, on a super high level in cycling and trying to get into the highest level of, of another sport. I don't know why, but it just drives me. And but uh, it's perfect now that they're going to allow GT3 cars. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. Porsche building a new one, I heard. No? Or did they already build? No, they... No, we're going to drive with a new one this it. year. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I it should be, I mean, it should be achievable. It's achievable. It's, no? achievable. it's, a, it's a, stra a strange time right now where we're living in. So finding money is not as sure. easy as it was a few years ago, I think. But I still think it's possible. I mean, uh, you have to stop, keep, keep pushing for it. Yeah. If you give up now, it's stupid. No, but I think how the rules change now on yeah. the age and, and more focus on, on, let's say, customer racing, how they call it, mm -hmm. in, in, in GTs. I think it's, it gives perfect opportunities yeah i think um, i've been following the rules uh, for quite some time now because yeah. also it's my one of yeah. my passions so um seeing that they switch to gt3 also for uh, for imsa and aco so i mean it's a good decision yeah. i think giving uh giving the constructors uh the same platform yeah. all over the world so they don't have to build three super expensive cars the, the, where you can't race anywhere with so I think that uh, that will work out fine. And you see it already with the hypercar segment. Yeah. Uh, Constructor just keeps coming. I think yeah. there's nine now already. And then a few, few more pending. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be a good thing. It's going to be an interesting time. It's going to be... Back. We always said, what's the era you want to race in? And we always referred back to the GT1s yeah. of 98. And But I said, now we are going to actually live the the new golden era, yeah, I, think, I think, with so. all the the new classes and brands and and, and I'm, I'm probably one of the last ones with combustion engines yeah true so i think if people are gonna look yeah. back to racing in 30 years they're gonna look back to the era that's gonna come right now yeah that's cool i didn't think Always about that remember us. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be the heroes <laughs> <laughs> gonna be a legend but oh, that's your dream no i am a legend no <laughs> <laughs> you're a legend in your streets <laughs> where you live. <laughs> um your best achievement probably we know the answer but maybe in motorsports huh? ah, in motorsports okay uh, what is your best achievement then in motorsports uh, so far my best achievement um, my best race I've done was in uh, when I was racing with the prototypes in, in spa and I, I, you guys know this you know the, the moment you sit in the car and nothing else exists anymore and you just keep pulling away yeah from the guys behind you and I think I had uh, um, Longin behind me or something and I would just keep pulling away from him and I was I was so in the zone like nothing else existed anymore and I was in the car for one hour and it felt like five minutes yeah in the end we didn't win the race because with the, the fueling the car got a little bit fire and but I was 30 seconds ahead of the of the guys after the start after the first stint yeah so that those moments you know that's where I do it for again yeah. I mean I, I've won races already and I've, I've won Dubai in the touring cars um, overall so I've, I've done already some good results and uh, won Spa the Pro-Am class with the Carrera Cup so I've done some good results but just that that's that zone you know it's trying to get in that zone of yeah, just being one with the car and the car's glued to your back and just everything just happens and you don't know why you're doing it but you're doing it that's why I love motorsport so I think that's that's um, yeah the best achievement yeah probably that do you get a similar feeling when you're an, on a bike? Uh, when you're performing ultimately? It's the same thing, very rare. Yeah. But when it happens, and on a bike it's different because sometimes, um, yeah, the race is like, for example, my last Paris-Roubaix, when I was in front for 60 kilometers on my own, that's where you're on your own and you're trying to control everything and you get into this zone where you're not thinking anymore, just your instinct, your, your trained instinct because you've been doing it for over and over and over again. And you're just in control of everything, you know. You're controlling the um, the lead you're having with the back markers, and, and and you're coming a little bit back, but you're giving them the advantage a little bit more. And then you're pulling away again after the cobblestone section, just being in control of everything without thinking about it. It's rare in cycling because most of the time you're fighting with 50 guys to go to the corner sure. or sprinting, and then it's just chaos, and you're out of control a little bit, and you have to follow what happens around you. But even then, it sometimes happens. But it's um i think it's uh, the athlete's dream to be in that zone as much yeah. as much as possible yeah. i wish there was a switch to to put it on <laughs> yeah, it's not it doesn't come <laughs> no. on, on request let's say you go back to the beginning of your career and you would have the same amount of talent in motorsports and cycling 
what would you do? Oh, very <laughs> difficult. <laughs> uh, there's no chance to do both. Uh. I mean, or let's say if, I, if you had to choose between 24 hours Le Mans overall victory or uh, Paris Roubaix. Um, I think Paris Roubaix. Yeah. yeah. And not because I, I think for me right now at this moment of my life, um, yeah, it wouldn't be possible to do Roubaix again. But it will be the same when you choose um, yeah, motor racing. You, you have to do it in the, at a young age. You sure. can't, you can't, but you can do Le Mans at 45 years old. But you That's can't true. win Paris Roubaix at 45 years old. So I think, um, yeah, the way it is right now is the only way you can do both. You can't just do Le Mans and then try to win Paris Roubaix when you're 35 years old and start cycling again. It would be difficult. Yeah. It would be difficult. Yeah. I was expecting mm -hmm. the answer, but yeah. It's a close but call. <laughs> it's a close <laughs> call. It's yeah, a close it, call. It looked like a close call. Well, well, no, no, it is. It is. It is. But uh, yeah, when I was uh, when I was a kid, you know, bikes were there. Uh, we didn't have any go karts, so it was an obvious decision. And and as soon as you feel you're good at something, I, I did sure. my first race was even a race where you don't need a license for. It was like a schoolers championship mm -hmm. at the track in Zolder. And um, I was 12 years old and old bike of my dad and you just go there not expecting anything. And I won the race, I put my arms in the air. And as soon as I crossed the finish line, I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And that's where I had to switch. Before that, I wasn't into bikes or I was just playing around and doing everything that I, I liked to on the day that I was doing it. But the day after I was doing something else. But that moment I was like, I was there. So it was a competitive. It was probably well. competing, yeah. 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 I've, I've never... I've never raced bikes because of the training. I like to train, but I didn't love it. I raced bikes because of the racing. Yeah, because to be. And that's also why I'm racing. Hmm. And also in race weekends now, it, I can, like, to, for me, it's the most difficult, like pushing a free practice, for example. Mm -hmm. and, and also that's why I'm talking about the qualification, but getting into the race. And the problem now is with the Carrera Cup, it's 30 minutes. So you have to be in front to be in front yeah. of the finish line. But the racing, that's why I do it, just the racing. Yeah. That's interesting. You still have a lot of stress before the... Because, I mean, the qualifying things are new for you. Yeah, I've done qualifications ever since I raced, but now the qualification is... But because is you have more pressure? Yeah, it's, it's just more important now. If you do if you do an endurance race, a three-hour endurance race, and you're yeah, with a rolling start, you're tenth yeah. on the grid or you're, you're third on the grid, in the end, it doesn't really no, make a big difference really about strategy and and everything that's involved. You know, if you have a, a bad safety car call, yeah... The race is over, or you can win the race with a bad safety, or with a good safety car call. In sprint racing, if you're tenth on the grid or you're fifteenth on the grid, trying to pass three guys is not easy. Yeah? No, no, for sure, and also depends what track and yeah. who's driving in front of you. It's for sure very, very different. I always feel that sprint racing is more like pure raw racing, like s speed. Yeah. Mm. And endurance racing is more like a complete package to work. Yeah. There's a lot more preparation and stuff Everybody during the race and job. after the race. And, and also yourself, it's not just getting in the car and being quick. No, you no, need but to be, you need to have a complete package where in sprint, it's just, you know, yeah, even sprint, you have. In sprint racing, when you get in the car, you're on the grid, it's up to you. Yeah. All the rest doesn't matter anymore. Oh. You have your engineer on the radio, but what, what does he say? Yeah, yeah. Yellow flag there, or, but yeah. it doesn't influence the result. In the end, where in um, in entrance racing, yeah, to run a car, you have like 30 people involved and they're all equally important. Exactly. If, uh, if the tire guy messes up. Exactly. Uh, and it's also your job to have that crew and yeah. package working. And, and, and that's why I also okay. love endurance racing. Yeah. I think sprinting is more um, my thing. It's it, it more to, no, it's, my mentality is more sprint mentality, yeah. but I love endurance racing as well. I prefer endurance racing. I also, I, and, and a few years ago, I would say I would like more sprint racing. Um, Same when I was young, it was more sprint. But, but now. if you look at all the, the big races, they are all endurance races and they, I don't know, it just gives a, a different feeling winning an endurance race than a sprint race. It's like an endurance race really feels like a, like a team victory. Like everybody did a good job. And okay, if you can do an amazing stint in your last stint to make, to overtake somebody okay but you wouldn't be able to to do that if your other two teammates or the team didn't do a good job to to bring you to that position yeah i completely agree that the thing is in endurance racing in uh, 24 hours for example you have 1000 highs and lows yeah. mm. where you don't know what's going to happen you're not in the car you can't control the circumstances you're waiting for somebody to get out of the car 
always something's broken. You're, yeah. Or you're waiting for something to break. You know, you have information that the other guys don't have. So the tension of a 24 hour race, you can't compare with anything else. Mm -hmm. I'm always, when I do a 24 hour race, I'm, I'm, I'm destroyed mm. after that. And not mm. just physically, but just, you know, Monday, Tuesday after that, you're like, oh, you're empty. And I think just the just reward drain, of it is it, a lot. It just drains you. Cause I'm okay. I'm again, I'm extreme and you might laugh. You might, <laughs> might laugh about it, but I'm already thinking now about, and because it's going to be the biggest race in that circumstance I've ever done about Le Mans this year. Like last night I couldn't sleep. I was already starting to think <laughs> about <laughs> things to prepare and, 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 and what to bring to the motorhome yeah. and, 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 and when do we get the rules to read the rules and so on. And I, I know you would never do that, but just, did you, did you meditate already? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm You're one of the, you just arrive and drive. If he arrives, <laughs> if he gets there, if I'm on the wrong, yeah. I'm on the right flight. And you're the planner. You're always trying to get all the information. Yeah, I think from, especially no. for a race like that, I, I really, I really know. Yeah, I do. I really know now what I'm going to eat the day before the race. And, and I, just, I don't, <laughs> I, I, I prepare my race. If I don't know everything, I, I know, uh, maybe a lot of people think I don't know, uh, everything about the, or anything about where I'm going or blah, blah, but I'm always, well, I know my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the most important yeah, for it, me. It is. It is. When, uh, back in the days when we were in stage races, most of the time I didn't know where we were. You know, <laughs> no, no, just go into the bus after the stage, take a shower, sleep, or think about life because you're fucked. And then, uh. <laughs> And then you go to a hotel, you walk into the hotel and then the day after you get back in the bus and go to a starting place. But where you are, most of the time, I really didn't know. Yeah. You check the stage a little bit, one hour before the start or something, and then you, you see some names there. But if you're in Spain or even <laughs> in Italy, you know, it's just a name, you don't know where you are. Sounds like Greece. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, but like, no, no, but I, everybody I'm, has his own. I would own not, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. six months ahead, uh, not being able to sleep because I don't know what to no. eat the day before, but <laughs> I, uh, I would probably prepare a little more, like do, do some preparations, but not, uh, it's also just because I'm excited for it that I had to, you know, yeah, it's exciting it. because it's the first time you will have be able to, to race, uh, the new, um, the H cars in Le Mans. Mm. So it's cool. So that will be the first race Le Mans. No, it will, first race will be Sebring and Sebring. this will be the fourth race, but yeah, that race is going to be the highlight. I mean, no, I mean with the, with the new cars, I, th I heard that, like the customer cars, they weren't being delivered until April. No, but the factory cars are running the entire season. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we start in Sebring at the yeah. first race. Um, but yeah, Le Mans is going to be the first Le Mans with LMDH yeah. hypercars, hundred edition. Um, it will be yeah. very nice. It will be very big race. But very cool. If you had to uh, compare, I think it's quite. It's big. an easy question, I think. The the physical no, yeah, but it's it's different. The physical difference between cycling and motorsports. On the one hand, I think it's it's quite clear, but there's maybe yeah, I mean, you have the perfect perspective on that. I think um, being as fit as possible will help you um, stay mentally fresh for a longer period of time, especially in endurance racing, but also for sprinting. Being uh, completely not fit yeah, will drain you because your body just asks for so much more energy mm -hmm. just to stay fit and then you're starting to make mistakes because your eyes can't follow and, and everything just uh, yeah, goes downwards from there. So being fit in a race car, of course, makes you faster, but you don't need the same stamina that, no, that you would for sure. need for a seven hour bike race or for a three week stage race. Of course, it's different training. It's completely different sports. Um, endurance athletes, um, yeah, are just different breeds than, uh, than motorsport athletes. Mm -hmm. But I think the mental approach is comparable to a one day classic race. For example, you need to stay focused for seven hours, completely focused. And the way you feel after that, it's also not that you're physically completely broken after a one day stay, one day classic, uh, you, you feel tired and everything's empty, but it's uh, the same thing. Like I said, like the Monday and the Tuesday after a 24 hour race, just, yeah. there's so much going on and there's so much stress and noises and people and, and, and it just, everything comes in because your, yeah, your mind's open. Everything's functioning 100%. So it's also a strange fact that, uh, sometimes I'm talking about racing that I've done in 2009, for example, and people ask me about a certain 
um, thing that went on in the race. And I just can't, it's there. Yeah. You, can, you can talk about it, but that's because I think your, your processor is 100% that moment and you're, so, you're taking in everything. But that means the night after that, you're like, you're destroyed. Yeah. Every night, I, I, when I'm in bed after a race like that, you know, you're, 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 the, the film starts playing all over again. So would you say you it's more to, mentally it's, exhausting maybe then? Or? Yeah, it's, I think the mental um, exhaust, you know, the, the way you feel it, it's probably, um, the way you digest it is probably the same. Mm -hmm. So you just have to take everything in again. When you're in the car, there's also a lot of things happening, but it's more you and the car and you're not racing with five, six people all at the same time, all, all the time. Sometimes it happens, but but in a, on a bike race, you're always with 180 guys sure. racing for the same centimeter and there's uh, 100,000 people uh, cheering and noise. And so it, uh, there's a lot of input. Yeah. yeah. One question, because it's just because probably a fan of uh, <laughs> me, isn't it annoying when you are cycling up the hills and there are people, they just, I mean, they, they block you or they, isn't it annoying? Like riders? No, like fans. Well, it doesn't happen that often. No? I mean, it, it always looks impressive on a, like on television or uh, even back in the days in, in Roubaix, you know, where people were still drinking beers a block all day long and then you come by flying by and they're on the cobblestones, you know, you're huh. just flying by, what, five millimeters, three millimeters, but they're drunk, you know, yeah, five, <laughs> millimeters is, five millimeters is gone quite, quite easy. So, uh, yeah, sometimes you give them a little shoulder, you know, just to stay upright, but yeah, the, the crashes with people is, I've seen it a few times, but it's not, it's not like it's happened now all the time. You mm -hmm. know, the riders are always so focused and they're riding on the, yeah, on the, the centimeter that they want to ride on but they keep in mind that something can happen so they can get out of the, mm -hmm. the line. I think you would be surprised how elbows out bike races are. Because I've done oh, yeah. a couple of uh, criteriums in, in Germany, I think three, four years ago, and I started the first one and, and I didn't know what to expect. And it was like, after one lap, I was and not because I was tired, I was almost last. Yeah, yeah, you really need to like, it's like racing and put it in and, and put your elbow out and, and, and tell the other guy to fuck off <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> because a, he's annoying. It's, it's, like, it's really like... It's like exactly the same thing. Yeah, I was I was really surprised about it. I thought it was mainly in like coming to the sprint that everybody's no. going elbows no, it's, out. and It's all the time. I mean, if, you're, if there's a decisive section coming up, like in, uh, in Flanders, for example, with the climbs, you know, every corner is, 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 is important because this corner decides the next corner and that corner decides the, the first climb. So every corner, five k's before, six, ten k's before, that's already lined up and people pushing and trying to be and managing that is more satisfying. Or, or, uh, most of the time, that's satisfying to be always in the same spot and at the right spot all the race long than winning a race. Because uh -huh. it's, that's so difficult to manage because yeah, there's all these factors you can't control. The other riders, you don't know what yeah. you're doing. So after a while, you know, doing it all over and over and over again, you you start to yeah, know the guys and know who's going to react yeah. which way, like in a car. Like in, yeah. Yeah, like in Abu Dhabi, I had Pierre Guidi next to me and he was like... Yeah. He, <laughs> so, okay, you know, some people ride differently. Mm -hmm. So um, it's the same on a bike. You know where you, you know who you can pass without problems and you know who's going to give you shit. Yeah. So Except you got 150 same. and we got maybe 20, 30. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <other> ones. <laughs> but it's the same philosophy and, yeah. uh, and then you know which, which, with what driver you can try to dive bomb and you know yeah. he'll turn in or not and which one you have to be a bit more careful. Yeah. Um, probably also for my eyes, an easy question, but maybe not really. The harder sport of the two, uh, I would probably ask in in which way it's more difficult to, to be competitive. Or to be the best. Or yeah. Or I have had this, I had this discussion with uh, with Sam Sam Young a few mm -hmm. times because yeah he's always yeah he's, he's he's the example you know he's tried to get into the, mm -hmm. the, the paid driver role and he's a very good driver but if you see how difficult it is to get there what you guys are doing um, and then if you see if you're any good at bike riding how easy it is to get paid for a for a for a job the difference is super super yeah. difficult so I think. Yeah, being a professional bike rider when you're any good it's not that difficult being a professional motorsport athlete is very difficult because you need 
the politics. You need to be at the right place at the right sure. time to get the good cars, to get the right people behind you. Um, the package to be good in motorsports, it's much more complicated than the package to be good in, at cycling. Okay. Cycling, I think 95% when you have the motivation, you can do everything yourself. You don't need sure. anyone. You need the bike and, and that's it. You have a lot more control. You have control. Yeah. And that's why also when something goes wrong in motor racing, I mean, I'm, I'm, I was, a few times I've, I've never been so destroyed after a weekend than in motor racing. And I've, I've lost more races in cycling than I've won, but I've won a lot of them. But um, after being, because you can't control everything, you know, you're at, at uh -huh. the lead at the 24 hours of Zolder, going to win your first 24 hours of Zolder and like three hours for the finish, the engine explodes. Yeah, that's it. You know, you you yeah, can't do anything about it. You've you've not done anything wrong. Just yeah, a piston decided to break and blow the engine up. So there's a lot of things you can't control, and that's purely mechanical. You know, yeah. but trying to grow out of um, a karting career, I think going to become professional as a as a motorsport athlete is very very difficult and much more uh, difficult to control than in cycling. Yeah, that's it, interesting. True, answer. because when on the in cycling, it's just you and and your bike, and probably the team is is, is also giving you guidance how to how to go but through you, the race. But yeah. in racing, if if uh, if the if the tire gives up, if the engine gives up, if the gearbox fails, if the um, yeah. fuel sensor or the fuel pipe goes off or like, water pipe goes off, you also have technical issues in bike races. But I, it's funny no, you say that. I I feel the same because last year I did some Ironmans yeah. or or bike races. It's you get the reward of how much talent and effort you put in yeah and then that's your result in yeah. motorsport sometimes you can put endless effort and talent in but you are not able to get a result yeah. maybe for years because you're yeah. in a bad car or a yeah. bad team or, or and you can't show yourself or you have bad luck that's but that's then, then you're already there i mean yeah to get true. there um before you're racing in a, in a professional car in a in a, in a in a constructor's car you know how much money it already costs and and sure how many good or bad calls you had to make to get there. And every decision you make is a uh, is super important for the rest of your career. Where in cycling, you know, if you have a bad week, you still have the week after. And yeah. especially before you turn pro, the moment people starting to notice you, there's more margin also to a bad week or a few bad weeks because they know. Yeah. And it's also easier to measure talent in bike racing than in motorsports. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to measure talent in a, in a car. Yeah, because there's so many unless everybody drives the same car at the same time of the day on the same tires with the same fuel you yeah. get a comparison yeah. let's say fuel and tires is always the yeah. pain in the ass to get yeah. to get a hold of like when in a training session you're like oh what tires are you on how much fuel did you have in the car yeah. did you take any curb <laughs> yeah what scares you most bike crash or car crash um i'm i'm completely um relaxed in a in a, in a race car um, almost on every moment, I haven't been really scared in a car yet. Uh, I had two big stints already, uh, stunts. Um, in on a bike, I'm, I'm not racing bikes anymore, so it's hard to compare. But I think you're more fragile on a bike. I think I'm 100% sure, 1000% yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, you're more fragile on a bicycle than in a race car. Uh, you sure? <laughs> yeah, uh, you don't have the iron bars around yeah. you and, and a big integrated helmet, a full helmet. No, but I think yeah, if, if you crash on a bicycle, it's going to hurt all the time, yeah. even a small one, always. And a car, yeah, you have to really be unlucky to hurt yourself in a modern modern car. Well, I've actually, I don't know if you, I think I've never really publicly spoke about it, but in 2018, yeah, I see a, a question here. I, um, Wednesday or Tuesday before a race in America and New York, was on my bike alone, uh, nice new bike, two months old, limited edition, fancy, <laughs> going downhill. And back then I was like, I hadn't crashed yet, or not <laughs> proper. <laughs> Very happy, I haven't crashed yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like killing everybody on the downhills or being very good and, and, and putting like, a lot of risk like and, is, <laughs> like and getting comms on Strava downhill and, and, and you know, no fear. Went down 50Ks and it was this roundabout which I did with friends already 10 times and which is, yeah, a roundabout. And I went in, front wheel slipped away, fell down. My whole arm open, 
broke my little finger, my whole leg open, uh, frame oh, yeah, broken on the bike. And like, I still had to bike home for half an hour because I was in the middle of nowhere. And then the day after I had to fly to America for the race. And it was completely, everything was wrapped up, my arm, my leg, my, uh, my hand on the inside. And I came to the track. <laughs> And I remember telling Earl, I said, yeah, uh, the bike accident, but let's try not tell anybody. That's and he said, look in the mirror. <laughs> You're not going to try to tell anyone. And he was literally taping my, my hands and my legs after every session because I have huge scars now because I had to take all the, the stuff off because it was drained with sweat and had to you find know. gloves two sizes bigger. And he would like, cut them open, which is not illegal, and hold them open. I could fit my hand in and in the first session was driving and actually spun. It's like this mini track, 40 seconds, Lime Rock, I don't know if you know it. Mm-hmm. And I had a moment and <laughs> my finger, <laughs> I, got I, couldn't, I couldn't keep the steering wheel, so I let go and just spun. I was like, fuck. But in the end, we finished second, so it wasn't dramatic. But then the, like, the project manager of Porsche came and said, if you can, don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it again. <laughs> don't ride but, bikes. But yeah, bike crashes hurt more. Well, I've had some serious car crashes as well, but. Yeah, you tend always to quick. tend to find them, huh? those 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 chunks. Yeah, I never have small accents. It's like no, when when big. you do it, yeah, you, like, like go. once you go, you go big. No, how does it go? There's a word. There's a meaning. Go. I don't know what you want. And then the Nurburgring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what, what, your, what is he talking about. What, what was your perspective? Uh, I honest have, one. I, I honest have a, one. I have a brother as well, so I completely understand. Yeah. That's it. That's and it. you know that the younger brother is always at fault. I have right? a younger brother, <laughs> two year younger brother, so I completely understand. No, I mean, yes. Yeah, yeah, shit happens. Eh? You can say it off mic later. No, no problem. I, I always say, ah, we've spoken a lot of <laughs> no, <about> no, <laughs> Let's go to the next question. <laughs> Actually, uh, for me, an interesting one. Um, what it was for you, because probably um, for you, the hardest part, because you are or you were uh, one of the top cyclists uh, in your era, the hardest part of staying or becoming on the top level, what was for you the most uh, difficult part of that? Um, I think if if you... I, I, everybody has difficult moments. I've I've been pro for almost 17 years, so there's 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 moments you get tired of the bike, you get tired of the of the press, of the public, of pressure, of everything. But trying to yeah find ways to continue and and find a, a positive way to go to um, to approach these things, that just makes you also a better human being. So when I was 25, I wasn't the same person or rider when I was 35, uh, 20, 25 or 35. So you just change into that. Find, uh, you find a way to be comfortable with all this and um, keep just pushing. So most of the time when the injuries were bad and you're trying to come back after injuries, that always just yeah, gets worse than well, no, um, less easy, let's say. Not more difficult, but less easy. So the last one I had was a skull fracture where I lost the hearing on my left oh, side yeah, in Abu Dhabi. Bad crash. I was 34. Four or thirty-five at the moment. I was just really, really in, in a very good shape. So the was the last race of the season. So probably I remember gone, that. I was I watching. Would, yeah, I would have gone into the winter super relaxed and in good shape, and then kick some ass the year after that. But instead, I was coming back again all winter long, training on my own, not feeling well. Just and that just just drains, you know. After yeah. after the, 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 the fifth time or the twenty fifth time you're doing this, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And I think that's also why I stopped when I was 36. And I could pr- probably continue a little bit longer, but I was just yeah finished with all that. But all the rest you can uh, you can overcome. This like and this is I think this is a very big difference in what we do. You I mean you haven't experienced that, but. When I, because I did some, yeah, I told you Ironmans last year and, and I looked as well at others and the same in cycling, you, you work and you train for months and put so much effort in that's and no. you get like a bad flu or a crash and it's like, it's, yeah, that's it's no all guarantee. gone yeah, and, also, and then you have to start over again. Yeah, when you, when you crash the car and it's completely totaled, you can have a new car the week after the and, next day. And, and the next day and have a good result. Exactly. In cycling, you train for a year, 
and uh, you're in your yeah. best shape ever. And uh, the week before your big goal, uh, somebody decides to go down before you and you go down with him and you break your arm or your elbow or it doesn't matter, boom, six months, seven, eight months later, you're back on the bike again on a, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a good shape. Uh, almost ready something happens again boom again gone six months but you know. even if you get sick if you get yeah, a bad yeah, flu or I, you get COVID nowadays yeah. and stuff like that i had it one one year when uh i had to fly to no i had to drive to Torino. i was i was still living in monaco at the time and um the day before at night you know feeling a little bit ill and at night 39 and 40 degrees fever you know and then you a, a, a wise person would decide not to go, you know, but it's mm. the, the last stage race before the classic. So you're like, maybe it will get better. So uh, I, I drove there first three days. It was five degrees and, and like melting snow. And I was there with a fever on the bicycle, <laughs> completely just dead <laughs> after that. And I just got in shape a little bit more. Like I was Ford in Flanders, I think that year. And, and I won't get real again. But if you look back at that, um, it was like uh, one of the, the worst calls I've ever made, but just, you know, you're panicking, you know, I, yeah. am I going to tell anyone I have a fever? You know, I was looking like, like a, like a, like a dead man, but I did the race. I finished the race. Um, I wouldn't have done the same when I was 35, but I've done it. And that's just things you learn. And, and yeah, it's, you, you're panicking much more because you know, and you need to race. You have you, to do you it. You think, you think yeah. you need to race exactly. because otherwise you can't be good. But in the end, when you're sick, you're sick. Yeah just stay off the bike for a few days and recover and then go training again. And I would have probably done the better results than I've done now, but I even have that in, in but you're so fragile, you know, with it, sick. yeah, with every time you go training, like you always think I, I need to, or you have to do this when now, when you get older, you think more often from, yeah, it's better to take yeah. the day off and, and, and recover in two days. Oh, that's what, that's what Tom said. That's if you are like 25 or 35, it also makes a big difference how you think in life and what you do and what's the best for. So maybe. there's still hope for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> still a lot of hope, a lot of hope. Ten years of hope. <laughs> the difference is huge. It's but also, I think, like you just said, or like Tom said, if you are training for one year and you feel like, okay, this year I can. Uh, of course, everybody is in cycling and the top. Everybody is strong, but uh, if you feel this and then you have an issue, I think even mentally, I would say, then cycling for me looks a much more tougher sport mentally than racing because like you said in racing you can make a mistake okay it can you affect in, in cycling you affect yourself but also the team behind you in racing you affect yourself your teammates the team uh, the manufacturer probably a bit more people but the effect of of training giving everything for one year or half a year uh, suffering almost dying every uh, every training to then not being able to show it, I think for me no. personally would be very tough. I think the in in, in motorsport, uh, money can solve a lot of problems, yeah. and in cycling, it's less relevant. Mm. So uh, yeah, like I said, if you break the car the day after, you can have a new car, and you're in the same shape, and you're driving the car, and you're going fast again. Where in cycling, it's just not possible. You can have all the money in the world supporting you. You, you need the time. You need the, the and the work and the work yeah. and and yeah, that mentally that's just so ex exhausting yeah, after exhausting. a while. And you, you're never sure. And like you can do this all and all over and over and over again. And and every time you get back on track, you know something can happen. And there's there's a lot of riders that I've known, like except for Marco, for example, he's been in that in that corner for a few years already. Yeah? Every time he gets back on track, boom, he goes down again, breaks something, always very bad. Like not mm -hmm. just not just his pinky, but always very bad. Another five, six months. And that's just so difficult to get back uh, after that. Yeah. Um, you said before that your big dream is Le Mans. And I guess that's also one of the reasons why you started racing in GT3 cars. The Golf 12 Hours, I think, yeah. was the first time. Yeah. How was it? That was good, actually, yeah. Because well, it's it's, it's, we, it's quite different, I think, to what you've done. Uh, yeah, it was the yeah, first four? time in a, in a proper GT3 car. But um, no, I was, I was surprised about the, the level was, was very high there. Mm -hmm. um, the first, I think, 10 teams, yeah, there, you cannot really get into that in the, until they get the result. But I think we were 13 or something at the last stint. And then Peter, Peter got out of the, the pit lane, you know, in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. And then they didn't see each other. They touched. And so... The car wasn't badly damaged. The crash was impressive, but the car wasn't actually damaged at all. But he thought the car was totaled, so he got okay. out of the car, took a look, so he lost four or five laps, but then he could continue. 
and I think in the end we were 16 overall or something. But if everything would have went well, I think we were 13 overall, which wasn't bad for us. It was also, uh, um, yeah, a nice experience to do. So GT3, I think, is the way to go right now. I love prototype cars. I love downforce, but... Right now, I think like LMP2 and everything, it's going to go less and it's, or going to go yeah. away. But that's um, that's what that's car that I really love. But yeah, the, the, the modern GT3 cars are also pretty pretty good for with downforce and <laughs> difficult to or I always hate to answer that question. I'm going to ask it to you. But <laughs> if you would have to judge yourself, um, the difference in, in in speed compared to a pro, where would you? situate yourself at the moment it depends on the pro <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah I yeah, think, yeah. I but think an in, average um uh in abu dhabi where with the porsches but because uh, you know the mercedes and uh, yeah. the, Ast uh, the mclarens they were like out of our league uh the ferraris as well yeah but, but the, the same porsche, driver on the, the same with car with the porsches i think it was like a second yeah in a qualification. Plus, I did the first quality, so everybody needed to qualify. So I was the first rider out with high fuel. fuel yeah, sure. So it wasn't I that bad. Take it off. Like and where, where do you want to be? Um, at zero, obviously, I guess, yeah, as a zero. competitive <laughs> list. <laughs> <at zero>. like, <laughs> like or everyone. plus half a second. Like, like you, also, you also want to be faster than <laughs> yeah, you were yeah, yesterday. Absolutely. So, no. But I know that I will never be the professional cyclist, yeah. uh, no matter what I yeah. do. I think because I yeah like you said you didn't start this when you were at a young no, age no, no, so. not at all not at all but that would be good. I'm I'm already I'm I'm never satisfied you know it was my first race in a GT3 car as well mm -hmm. plus uh, like you know the Porsche um, the, the the model we're riding it's it's not old, an easy it's car. the oldest car also in the field it's also not an easy car it's to not drive. an easy car it's not an easy car but uh, it's easier than a cup car so that's already good sure. but finding the last second is um, yeah is the objective now yeah and do more races in the car that's yeah. the yeah, driving thing. time is and is getting key. and getting a new car <laughs> <laughs> so tell me how it is <laughs> i haven't same i've been so f focused on on so many programs i haven't driven the 992 yeah. gt3 rs oh the first time we'll be in daytona now is weeks. there a big difference well, i don't know you, I, you mean in, um, it's not a revolution i think that's yeah. called a big a big big update yeah but technically, it's a new system, right? New yeah. car. Well, everything, everything, everywhere a little bit, but it's not like a completely. I mean, it's still a Porsche 911. It's not not like the Ferrari, for example, which looks like a still completely a Beetle. Different, <laughs> different car. Yeah, but let's see. I mean, first race in the GT3, just track time, and then it's like confidence. Yeah, okay. because the GT3 for sure has more downforce than the Cup car. And Everything is comes quicker. Everything goes a bit quicker. So, not that not, not that much. I think. No, no. I think no. But just a feeling, you know, it's different mm -hmm. feeling. Yeah, but different. It's, it's, it's strange because it, it works better with me to get some downforce in a car. Like I've been racing the the prototypes for three years, the Normas, and I was in the end I was really really fast in that car, and it just makes more sense. Like you know, you're fighting with the car, and the car decides. Like the car is pushing you. The car is saying yeah. to you, you can't go faster here. Like in a cup car. The car is like, respect my limits, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm having a lot of weight. and You, you have, have to, to fight be, a lot yeah, more. With to, yeah, that's to, it's more like <coughs> riding with soft gloves and finding that, that last, you know, yeah. where, the, where, the, where, the, where the, the back breaks out, but then the, the front end comes in, like in a prototype car or the car with some downforce, just push it in and go on the pedal and the car pushes through and yeah. it makes more sense to me, like, to have a car like that. We had Robin Freins on the show a couple times ago and he said the easiest car he's ever driven was a Formula 1 car. Yeah, I can so. imagine that <laughs> it makes it makes sense, you know. Yeah, absolutely. But also, this also annoys me a bit. Well, I'm I'm used to it now, and I I put it aside. But in GT cars, it's it's the car is your limit. It's not like mm. uh, if you have uh, the biggest ball of the paddock, and you say, "Oh, I'm gonna do this corner yeah. flat." It's just impossible because the car will not ne never let you yeah. do it. And you can have the biggest downforce cars there is. Uh, the, if the tire and the car doesn't allow it, it doesn't doesn't work. Mm. And that's why with aero cars, the, yeah. the 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 possibility of doing those things are is comes quicker. Yeah, the, the car challenges you. Mm. Where in a GT car, you're challenging the car. So in that's, some way, yeah, that's you're that's always that. fighting the limit in a yeah. in a GT car. Also, of course, in aero cars, but it's just a different way of of driving it. Um, well, of course, there is a 
as you know now in racing there you are talking a lot with uh, with the team on the radio but uh, it also goes the same way in, in in cycling so how different is the like said let's say a race strategy compared to a cycling race strategy how much are you talking there or how much are um, you a lot less because you know you get a lot of information but i think um the calls to decide a race in a in a cycling race i've i think i've never won a race because of somebody's saying the tactics or changing oh, yeah? the tactics to me you know in a, in a one day races there's always so much noise and you're so into yeah into the race at that moment 80 percent of the time you just can't hear what they're saying and also they they have a delay on the on the tv even if it's only five seconds but to this to, to be decisive in a race you have to be like this you know if, if somebody attacks you have to make the right call okay everybody started at this moment they they went 20 25 times already trying to chase this one down or follow him and then go go myself it's a decision you make on your own it's not somebody telling you to make this decision so i think it's harder to control the outcome of a bicycle race with a radio than uh, it is to control the outcome of a car race. But how would you compare the global strategy as a um, race, motor racing strategy in the race or, or your own bike strategy, the, which you decide on the, yourself? The strategy in a bike race, I think the, the, the moments that strategy we've planned before the race really happened was maybe five or 10 times out of 1000 races. Yeah. <laughs> so it's changed, it's called the time, you know, it's, you adapting to, yeah adapting to other people other race uh, other teams um, circumstances people in the breakaway that shouldn't be there or nobody in the breakaway you know it's it's always changing and you yeah. have to adapt to it super fast but um there are there are examples where everything you've planned just turned out okay but they're not really common i always enjoyed actually a lot of the the, the mind strategy yeah. games in, in the bike race and i've done a big bike race but every time i go to to Florida, uh, in, in, in the lead in Tampa, they have group rides on Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Saturday and Sunday. And I don't know if this is typical for the whole of America, but the group race there is a race. Yeah, hey, that's always <laughs> it's a warm up for 10 minutes. And then you have point A, B, C, uh, and everybody knows that's the finish point. And either they sprint or they have a breakaway. And the, um, I always find it super fun. The, the, the competitiveness but also the, the the strategy because it's not like i mean uh, you have don't you don't have unlimited amount of times to try because then you're yeah <laughs> you're game the, over the so you need to there. see look at the others and see who's going and who's staying and then and follow the good guy and and i mean i'm far off from the knowledge you have but that's the but it's, it's very different but i i, I think it's super fun yeah, I'm also because when I was a bit younger, I didn't really follow a lot into cycling. It's only been for the last couple of years um, that I really enjoy watching a, a big Belgian classic race or Tour de France or whatever. There is a certain... Uh, now we come to the funny section. <laughs> it's a funny section. <laughs> we were uh, obviously uh, getting some some information and we came. I came to an article and I <laughs> thought the headline... Was probably the journalist was a bit funny and i wanted to know a bit more about it <laughs> that you crashed a lamborghini because a cat a cat crossed the road is that a true story how long ago is it this must be another tough because as cycling in belgium one of the toughest sports and having a name like you or um i bet i mean you cannot do anything without it being unnoticed stuff like this no I, yeah if you do this with a with a volkswagen golf yeah true <laughs> nobody, it's more difficult but <laughs> no no it's difficult but <laughs> nobody, no, nobody cares you know but, no, then, but it's also because it's you yeah and people and know you. it was a it was a yellow michelago you know yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah it's a little bit more into the spotlight but it was a yeah it was a from my 20 three 24 years old just until i stopped it was crazy everything you do just everybody's there with that the must be tough to get yeah. that it's yeah, also that's, mentally exhausting that's well. one of the things i said you know you you have to find a way to to deal with it and um especially when yeah i, I also had the the rays of social media you know as 2010 2012 you know these things were getting hot, bigger and harder and i didn't really have the, the hype of it when i was younger but and i think the guys right now it's even more 
difficult to be yourself mm. because everybody's watching, exactly. everybody's filming, everybody's, everybody's um, talking and having an opinion and everybody can reach you. I mean, everybody in the world can reach anybody right now. You can, yeah. send, you can send a tweet to Barack Obama and uh, there's a big chance somebody will read it and tell it to him. You know, this wasn't possible 20 years ago. So you're more, it was more easy to, to be on your own. And I think... Um, I wouldn't been I, I wouldn't I wouldn't like to have all that extra pressure again uh, with social media. I can imagine. No, I completely agree. Nowadays, uh, you can't really say what you want uh, in interviews or on TV or on uh, radio thing or whatever. It's, I it's, hate it's saying the, the standard stuff. Like no, it was shame. a good race, and I thank my team and I thank my teammates. And I hate to hear this because it's uh, it's a shame because you take out all all the yeah, yeah all the the. the the natural f flow of people talking. I mean, if you look at riders right now, I was I was one of the guys. I said whatever I was thinking, and I, I had my own mind, and, and people liked it or didn't like it. And you have big fans, and you have big people who are actually exactly. going to starting to hate you after a while. But it doesn't matter. It's 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 pure. It's it's uh, it's the truth. And I think right now, um, a journalist he can already write down the answers to the questions he has before he asks them because everybody's saying the same thing all over and over again. But I always I also always try to be to say what I think, but the thing is Nowadays I don't know if difficult. this was in cycling the same, but I mean obviously we work for I work for Porsche and you for BMW and big German corporations mm. and the amount of time I get a comment about something I mean, stupid because I said my opinion and it wasn't even something bad worth speaking of. Yeah. Because you can't because you need to be within you know the guidelines yeah. and then yeah. sometimes like okay, I'm 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 just gonna stop because I don't want to start being the one who's just reading off the no, no, the no, press no. the press yeah. message before the weekend. Let's, let's <laughs> say twenty years ago the the window was this wide mm -hmm. yeah. and now the window is this wide. Yeah. Exactly what you can say. So. It's getting um, yeah le more and more difficult to be who you are. It's also the one of the reasons why we started to do this podcast because we not to to start to so people, but <laughs> to be to speak about what we want to speak mm. about. Um, final question and actually an interesting one, especially because you were gonna answer it. Um, Van Aert or Evenepoel? <laughs> oh, they're, they're different riders. I mean, I think. Uh, even the pool is going to be the biggest one of the two. Yeah? yeah. You mean uh, looking at the future? Or? Yeah, I think he's really, I think he really can win the tour. I mean, yeah. I, uh, I think everybody who uh, who has worked with him or, or been with him or spoke with him or seen his racing and uh, the way he does it right now is, I think he can win the tour. I think he's going to be the first Belgian to win the Tour of France. Uh, you've seen it this year already uh, with Vuelta, World Championships, San Sebastian. I mean, the, the follow-up of the last six weeks of the season, next level. I've never seen this before with anyone. No. To be com to, to stay competitive for this amount of, of, of yeah, days yeah. and weeks and being completely fucked. Yeah, and also the way he won the World Championship was just after the Vuelta, traveling to Australia, tired, getting there, and then going solo for 25 or 30 Ks <laughs> in a World Championship. Um, it's not something you see see very often. So, yeah, I know. I think uh, Wout is a different. Uh, there's different riders. It's it's hard. It, it's easily it, no. It's actually even not necessary to compare them with each other because no. Van Aert is more of a classics guy who's done well in the Tour and he can win the green jersey and he can probably do maybe a top ten in the Tour de France if he stays on on track and just follows his own his own thing. But even a pool has the opportunity to win the Tour de France. It's like you, every pro rider I go cycling with, if it's Ben Helmans and I went with Mathieu once in Spain a couple of weeks ago. It's true, every, everybody you speak about the name Evenepoel, it's like, uh, there's like, it's outside of, outside another level. Uh, yeah, it is, it is. I mean, Wout is a super good rider. Sure. And um, Mathieu as well. I mean, Mathieu... I think Mathieu is even a little bit, uh, for me personally, I like him a little bit more, the, the, the rider Mathieu Pradapool, because he's just a killer. He mm. can, he he's can a win. bit more raw, I think. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He's more like me when I was <laughs> riding, so I, that's probably why I like him more. No, he just, he, he's, he's always there on the right decision. He, he can win races when he's less than, than Wout, and I think the other way around is more difficult. Yeah. But, uh, but the, the possibilities of Evenepoel are just at this moment 
uh, limitless. I think he can win every race in the world. Is Maybe it true? except Barry Uber, but even then, I'm not sure. <laughs> Is it true the story? I don't know. I heard it once that before he went cycling, he was a almost becoming a professional football player. Even a pool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was. He, he, he was, was at Anderlecht. He was playing with Anderlecht, yeah. and he got an injury, and then um, yeah, he start. He had to r start riding because uh, that was the only way to recover from the injury. So he went with his dad, who was an old professional cyclist, and they were riding with uh, his, yeah, his old tourist club. Where he, and after a few weeks of training, he was dropping all these guys that were like uh, 20 years older than him. So it's like, well, fuck, he can do this. Eh? He's, a, he's got some stamina. And then, um, yeah, he took a license with my old team, with Paolo BC, like the kids' team. And uh, I think from the first year, he won 25, 30 races already. So, yeah. He was he was there straight away, and he was already 16 or 17 when he started racing car uh, uh, bike. Sorry. Mm. Okay, maybe let's hope it's he's never the too first, late. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's hope he's the first Belgian to win the Tour. Yeah, it's been a while. So, I think we had our questions. Do you have any questions? Yeah, let's <laughs> let's do them all together. The <laughs> <laughs> all together. Yeah. yeah. Sure, we'll can do. Why not? You can drive a proper car once, a Porsche. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> however you look at it. You've never been in a Porsche? Only a cup car. Yeah. I I did, you've driven the cup car. I did the first ever race, was 20 hours of Dubai, 2016. It was my first uh, GT season. I did it with a cup car. Yeah. And um, I also won Solder once with a cup car. But this one had ABS, the one in Dubai didn't. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It's difficult. It was. It's a. F it's a nice car, but it's not. I know it's That's back same. then not comparable to the G mm. G three cars they are today. So, but yeah, let's see. You should get uh, Porsche involved that they make a documentary about it, like the yeah. Fassbender uh, yeah. story. You can help. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, let's, you know how it works. It. I can try. Let's do it, and you get more comments. <laughs> <laughs> No, but this could be a cool story. I mean, yeah, for yeah. sure, uh, for sure. Especially right now, I mean, there's a uh, there's a lot of of windows you can. I mean, you, you got all this this streaming podcast. They are looking for content, action yeah. action packed content. Right now, people are looking for this kind of things because life is so boring. Because, like we say, you can't say or do anything anymore. Yeah. So they want to watch it on their cell phone or on the television. So they're looking for content. So I think, yeah, with all the constructors, the construction be constructors being involved and all the um, Yeah, the possibilities you have right now with documentaries and everything, it's a uh, it's a good time to do it. It's also the thing to use if you are, if you're able and you have like say your name. Yeah. Uh, why not use it and try to get there? Let's help get home to Le Mans. Yeah. See exactly. how Let's much we can that. help, but <laughs> <laughs> Let's try. One percent is enough. Yeah. I'll try to help you guys uh, ride by Rubé. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tougher job, I think. Let's first try to go up a mountain for me, and then uh, yeah, I'll up like. Even just uh, to go up, uh, what's it called? In Bolloberry? The pits? Yeah, the pits. <laughs> the pits, the pits. <laughs> <laughs> I've done the world championship <laughs> there. Huh? I've that's a f um, the, the only real bike race I saw up close was that one. Oh, ah, yeah? Yeah. I've never been. I've, I mean, I would love to like go to a proper stage race or, or yeah, one day race. or. You guys were living there? Right? Yeah, yeah, we did yeah. cross the street. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, it was, uh, I, was, uh, I was actually still an, an Espoir, a Belofte. But I did my first world championship uh, as a professional here in Belgium. I was 21 back then. Yeah. And um, first world championship with, uh, I don't know, 800,000 people or something. It was crazy. Crazy. And uh, we did an average of, uh, I think, almost 50. That day. <laughs> it was crazy. It was one of the, I think, the fastest world championship until Qatar. Qatar, we broke the record with uh, 5Ks an hour. <laughs> uh, No, no. Thank you for uh, for joining us. No yes, problem. Thanks a lot. It was very interesting stuff yeah. to hear about. I enjoyed uh, it. Me too. And uh, we'll hope to see you in Le Mans in a few months. 2026. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too early. Too late. No, no, no. It's right on time. No, <laughs> I try, try. I was next. just about to plan it in there. <laughs> <laughs> try, try next year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I hope it works. We'll see. I hope. Thank you for listening and watching. Um, <laughs> Like always, you can find us on all the main podcast platforms, also on YouTube since a couple of episodes. 
and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Our next episode, we haven't planned yet. No, we do. Because now we're uh, we're going to, you're going to Dubai, I'm going to Daytona. Oh, yeah, after that. You're going to Bathurst. And then we want to do our own little review about that and, and see if we won three races or Hopefully none. there is a nice trophy in the middle. <laughs> somebody did a, nice a good job. New, new Rolex. Yeah. I can maybe still wear it for the show and then my wife will steal it and or if wear you don't it for the rest of the year. <laughs> if you come second again this year, you can just go to the Rolex shop somewhere and you just go buy one. Nope, I'll never buy one. <laughs> Try to be on the right side this year of the guy going yeah. to the grass. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine I have... Even lately, even he, more again. I've, I've been thinking up, about you it. You woke up last night? <laughs> yeah, you woke yeah, up last night again? <laughs> imagine imagine being in the same circumstances again this year. I think I would push him off harder than I did <laughs> last year. I would, yeah, I would you, just push him off one the corner. Uh, what I thought about a long time was the corner before. I tried cutting back. I should have just pushed from Bye, the back. You can keep, I mean, It will never done. happen again. It's finished. And yeah. You shouldn't be thinking about it anymore. It was legendary. Yeah. It was the best racing uh, I still get goosebumps when I think or speak about it mm. now, but would have been a little bit more legendary if I would have won, but yeah. one day. Yeah, you need something to do. Exactly. You get all your goals in a few years, then uh, it's get boring. Mm. Exactly. True. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Thanks a lot. <laughs>